Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Out of This World Television with your host, Ted Marr. We're broadcasting live from Thurston Community Media here in beautiful Olympia, Washington, about an hour south of Seattle on the west coast of the United States. And I'm so lucky, we're so lucky to have Professor Jerry Pollock on uh, the program today. Um, he's a famous water scientist doing things that nobody else in the entire world is doing with water. He wrote a, wrote a book uh, recently called The Fourth Phase of Water Beyond Solid, Liquid, Liquid and, and Vapor. And I'm so happy to have uh, Professor Pollock on today. He's a wonderful professor at the University of Washington. And if I may call you Jerry. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Marr, may I call you Ted? <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Of course, a good friend. <laughs> you can you can call me anything you like as long as it's pleasant. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, well, Jerry, tell me, tell my listeners uh, or my viewers a little bit about your work and and um, and you do some things that are unique that things that nobody else does and not many very many people do in the world. Uh, well, I think I think you're you're, you're right on. And uh, so we recently discovered that uh, you know we all we all learned that water has three phases: uh, solid, liquid, and vapor. So we found a fourth phase, and uh, before I tell you what it is, I, I should state that this is not trivial. This is not some small amount of water that exists in someone's laboratory, but in, in fact, it's the kind of water that fills your body, Ted, and my body too, and the body of, of, of uh, viewers. It's the kind of water that we have inside of our body. You know, we, we, we all think, we all know that we've got two-thirds water, approximately, um, 60, 70 percent water. Right. Um, and, but, but, and we assume that it's the same kind of water that's the water in a glass. But in fact, it's not. It's this fourth phase. And this, this, fourth, phase, this fourth phase is like a liquid crystal. Um, it's water where the molecules, instead of bouncing around many, many times per, per second, a gazillion times per second, and sitting, uh, the molecules sitting randomly with respect to one another, this is order. It's like a crystal. Uh, the molecules are actually in line, just just um, like uh, any other crystal that you you, you could imagine. Mm -hmm. And uh, this idea is not new. Uh, the idea has been around for uh, much more than a, than a half century. In fact, there's a guy. Um, his name is Gilbert Ling, and Gilbert is now 98 years old and still kicking. And Gilbert has written seven books, uh, all dealing with the, the um, subject of ordered or structured water. Um, and and uh, his books have made an impression on a few people, and uh, I'm one of those few. It's mostly it's been rejected by scientists as preposterous, um, because everyone knows that there's no such thing as ordered water. But in fact, there's a huge amount of evidence for it. So you, you may know, Ted, I... I organize each year the annual conference on the physics, chemistry, and biology of water. And it's moved. It used to be in Vermont, but now it's in, in Sofia, Bulgaria. And at that meeting, the idea of ordered water, everybody knows about it. It's sort of common knowledge. It's not, it's not anything that's new or exotic. We just want to find out the properties of it. So I can tell you much more. I'm not sure what what's of interest, but it's really critical, of course, to know what's inside your body. And this kind of water is inside your body. Well, I know you've written about EZ water in your book. Right. And you've written beyond this solid liquid vapor, which is in all the texts. Everybody growing up, or going to college or high schools, whatever, we all intuitively think, okay, there's, there's, there's frozen water, ice, there's liquid water, and then there's kind of a gaseous kind of a cloud form of water. But yep. beyond that, there's another form of water, and you've written about it. What, what is that form, Jerry? Well, we call it easy water because, it be, it, it, because of, uh, of the way we, we discovered it. We, we, put, we, we had a, some water with particles in the water, little particles. We used microspheres. And then we took a gel, just like a piece of gel, a little piece, and we put it in the water. And we looked in the microscope to see what happened. And what happened is that right next to right next to that gel, all the microspheres got pushed out, and they moved uh, far away. And so there was a zone that was left without the microspheres. And someone said, "Oh, you should give it a name." And my Australian friend said, uh, "Oh, you should call it exclusion zone because it's obvious it excludes these little spheres. So call it exclusion zone." And it works fine because for short, it's easy exclusion zone. Interesting. The problem, Ted, is it doesn't work in all countries, but, you know, in England, in Europe, it's not easy, but easy said. So it doesn't, oh. it doesn't really work, but easy is easy to remember. So the name is stuck. So this is the same stuff that I was referring to earlier as the liquid crystal that's It's easy one. 
you know, we studied it uh, for a decade. We did uh, numerous experiments. And every experiment we did showed that this water is different from ordinary liquid water and is different from solid water, different from ice. It's somewhere in between, see. And, and it has a gel-like consistency. Um, and any of your listeners who have ever cut up, cut up a cell, you know, the water, the water doesn't pour out like a liquid. It just doesn't dribble out. It stays right. in. And, right. and this is the characteristic of a gel. This kind of water has the consistency of a, a gel. So it definitely can't be a liquid that's inside the cells. It's a gel, and it's this fourth phase or easy uh, water. Uh -huh. So wh what's interesting, um, many things, and the book is filled with, with I think, interesting stuff. But, but you know, in order to, to, to build a um, uh, uh, structure, to build a uniform structure, build a crystal, build order, you need energy. This is a, a fundamental concept in, in physics and chemistry. You need to put in energy. And, you know, for, for a few years, we simply couldn't figure out where that energy was coming from. It was not obvious. You know, you can't take this little chamber of experimenting and, and you plug it into the wall because that's <laughs> like yeah. your cell phone. And it ain't happening. And finally, it occurred to us, uh, it occurred to us after a student did a peculiar experiment. He took he took a chamber that was sitting on on the bench, and next to it was a gooseneck lamp. He shined the gooseneck lamp on the chamber, and this zone, this microsphere free zone, exclusion zone, expanded enormously. So wow. it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you know if you're putting light on and this zone expands, this liquid crystalline easy water expands, then you know maybe photons, maybe light provides the energy necessary wow. for growth. Wow. So. So we did experiments, and we found exactly that was the case. But the kind of light is is not not visible light that, that we we're so familiar with. Invisible light works, but what works a hundred times better is infrared light. Now I don't know, Ted, if you if 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 you're aware too much about infrared, most people don't don't really know about infrared light where it comes from, or whatever. So you know, you you kind of if you have a toaster at home, turn on the toaster, and you look inside the slots. You can see glowing coils, and you say, uh, oh, yeah, that's hot. And it looks like it's generating infrared light. Uh -huh. A lot of people know that. And it is. But actually, the infrared light is coming from everywhere. And, Interesting. And, yeah, and you can, you, can, um, you can check this. You just get an infrared camera. So it's like, like an ordinary camera, uh, except that your camera responds to visible light. And if it's dark in the room, you, know, you get no image. This camera responds to infrared light. So... It's great for night vision, you know. So if you if you turn out all the lights uh, and you can't see anything with your, your eyes, and turn on this camera, you get a beautiful image of everything that's around you because everything is generating infrared light, and that's the basis for the night vision. You can't see with your eye, but the infrared detector can pick up this light. So it's all around us. You can't get rid of it. It's actually it comes free. It's free energy. Imagine free energy. You don't have to pay a nickel for it. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very nice. And, and because it's there all the time, it means that the easy water is there all the time. But you add a little more to it, you get more easy water. Wow. Uh, you see, it's, yeah. That's, and, that's amazing. Well, it is amazing. It's really to think about it that, that nature is giving you something free. It's, I, yeah, please. Go ahead. I have a couple of messages to give you, and I think this might be useful for your research at some point in the future. Yeah. Um, first off, um, uh, Mati There's a fellow I interviewed last year named Matthias Di Stefano. He's an Argentinian young man. He's about 29 years old. And he has vivid life recollections of what life was like in Atlantis. He's been on my show before. Yeah. And one of the things he said was that they used water, like easy water, yeah. to, in organic computers as memory devices, which is far more efficient than microchips, far more efficient. <laughs> and and I said, well, he said, that's the reason why you don't find any written records of the Atlantean civilization, because they had it on these, in, in, these process, in these organic computers, which had water as a memory. And he said, that, that memory, those, those volumes, that information is actually in, this, in the oceans of the Atlantic Ocean now. But it's like scattered about, and you have to have a special way to get to it. Mm. Um, so I wanted to share that with you. Well, this is, uh, Ted, this is so incredibly interesting. And, uh, you know, I... I I don't know Matthias. I, uh, I haven't heard about him. However, I've been talking about the same thing for um, you know for the past three years or so. That it's possible to build a computer from or a computer memory from easy water. 
And, and, and so, it, it, you know, he and I share a similar kind of vision, except that he was there way ahead. Um, I think it's absolutely true. And, and the reason it's true is if you, if you think about, think about a, a modern digital computer right. and memory stick. So what is it? Right. So it, it's a, an array of atoms of silicon or silicon dioxide, um, um, a regular array, you know, one atom next to another, all organized in three dimensions. And, right. and you address each one of those atoms, and the atom can be in state one or state two, zero, one, on, off, whatever you want to call it. And that, that's the basis for the digital computer. But the easy water is the same. So the structure that we've deduced for this liquid crystalline water, this, this structure is a regular, it's actually hexagonal, a regular hexagonal array of oxygens and, and hydrogens. It's not randomly oriented, bouncing around like a gazillion times per second, but, but you know, a crystal that's organized. And this crystal has actually been, been solidified at room temperature by some Italian group. They, they were able to, to essentially grab some of that water, dehydrate, and it, pull out the ordinary water, and they're left with a solid. And they gave me some. I handled it. It feels like a, a kind of thread. So what you have is a situation, an organization of oxygens and hydrogens that resemble an ordinary computer memory, except of two huge advantages. Number one, it's packed so tightly, more than those uh, silicon atoms can be, right. can be packed. Right. That's the first thing. So you have a lot of memory density, and you can pack a lot into a small package. But the second is even more interesting. So in the case of silicon, you've got uh, state one, state two. But in the case of oxygen, um, which is dominant in, in this easy water, oxygen actually has um, five different oxidation states. The, the one that we learn about in chemistry class is minus two, like the valence of minus two. But it could be minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, and plus two. That's five. So, in other words, each point in, in the EZ memory can have five different states, not two different states. So the capacity for memory storage is incredibly greater than the capacity in, in you, current, current you, memories. And I think this is, for me, this is really fascinating. If, if we could figure out now how to access individual atoms the way it's been figured out for, what, uh, yeah, we'd what, be there. What what you what it would be nice for you to get is a five million dollar grant to pursue this particular idea because it's worth trillions of dollars. Yeah, it's worth it, it, it is. Uh, it, yeah, it, it, yeah. Um, and yeah, if 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 we if somebody wants to uh, to help, uh, that that would be great. We're, we're actually looking uh, for for you know the main the main thrust of the laboratory is is not toward this technology, so it's certainly in the background. Right. It's really so interesting. Right, but but the idea is for water and health. You know, everybody knows that you can't you can't live without water. Right. But the, the finding of easy water um, gives us a, a real handle on the relationship between water and health because this easy water is filling every cell. And if you're deficient, as which happens when our hair gets gray, uh, yours isn't quite gray enough, I think, to be deficient. I think you're pretty well hydrated. But in in my case, I think I need to drink a lot of water to keep yeah. <laughs> keep. I do too. This water, the water that we drink forms yeah. easy water, yeah. and this yeah. easy water is critical for every function of your cell. The, the water is integrated into the function. If you don't have enough of it, yeah. you're not functioning well. Uh, See, I, please, go ahead. I have to tell you, I've got an idea for you. Tomorrow I'll be playing on my show an interview I had with Master Lin in China. Ah. And, and he talked about an organic computer as well. Oh, oh, okay. And the other message I wanted to give you was, is, I don't know a thing about chemistry, but what I was given on, from the other side was H2O3. That's different from H2O2, H2O. It's that there's yeah. added oxygen molecules, and those added molecules can serve as a memory, some sort of memory function. Does that make sense? I don't know what yeah, I'm talking I, about. Yeah, I think you, you might. I might not be referring to H3O2. Um, so this, this is, this is the, 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 the easy water, and, and it, it does have extra oxygen compared to H2O. Right. Um, see, if you have to take H2O and multiply by 2, you get uh, H4O2. Um, this is H3O2, so right. it, it has fewer hydrogens than you expect, which is the same as saying there are more oxygens than, than you expect. And yeah, I'd say oxygens, I think, that are responsible because of their versatility and their capacity to, to, um, to, to exhibit uh, all of these different states. So maybe, maybe Master Lin has figured out how to, how to access it. Um, 
I, I'm not sure, but certainly, you know, there's a lot of evidence that electromagnetic waves can, can do that because there are many experiments now that, that show that if you take water, particularly easy water, right. and you, you expose it to electromagnetic waves, it changes the water. The structure changes in different ways, and this is really fascinating. It's just at the beginnings of really elucidating that. We're, we're, we're trying to figure that out as well. Yeah. yeah, so so one of the problems that you began to allude to is, you know, people in science who who are um, pushing the frontiers in areas that are unconventional, it's really hard to get money from from the government to, to do that, that because the, essentially the, the reviewers tend, the, the, for example, NIH and NSF, they, right. they tend to select reviewers who are the leaders uh, in the various field, and the leaders in the field are the ones who have achieved in mainstream science. If right. you're challenging mainstream sure. science, sure. you know it's hard to get get them to think positively of what what you're doing. Right. And I'm not the only one. Um, virtually everybody I know who who is doing unconventional science has real difficulty getting funded. Um, we're on, I think, just something really fundamental and basic that deals with the relationship of water and health. We have evidence that if you can restore the missing water that will make you healthy. It's not a, a, a restore the missing easy water. Sure. It's not complicated, it's actually easy to do and we're in the thrust of studying it. And we, we need money to, to keep to the people, to hire the people in the lab to do the sure. experiments and sure. such. Right. So, you know, any of your viewers who are interested in, in this stuff, um, I'd be happy to, to discuss with them and um, we could certainly use donations to keep this work going. Wonderful. Uh, Wonderful, yeah. Jerry. How do they get a hold of you, by the way? Could you maybe give uh, out a website or email? Or? Email is the easiest way. I am GHP, as in Gerald Harvey Pop, GHP at U, as in University, U dot Washington, spelled out, uh, dot EDU. Okay. Okay, great, great. Also, I don't know if you have time, but a week from tomorrow or two weeks from tomorrow, I'd love to have you on my show. You could talk about your lab and these ideas if you wish. Let's discuss. Okay. I, I, I have, don't have my calendar in front of okay. me. Okay, no worries. Sure. I'll send you an yeah. email. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll send an email. Send Appreciate email. that. But, you know, you're doing the kind of research that nobody else or not very many people are doing in the world. And, and, um, and, you're, and you're giving, you know, you're, you're doing it all basically on a shoestring. On relatively well, little. It has, no, I mean, it, yes, yes and no. Uh, it hasn't been a shoestring. We've been, in, in the past, highly successful in getting one of the NIH transformative uh, grants, which they give only in areas where they think something interesting uh, uh, may develop, something transformative. And sure. the problem is we had really nice funding for five years, but it expired. And when it expires, they won't, they won't renew it. So it's good for five years. And so we had this wonderful uh, uh, funding that enabled us to put together the experiments that were responsible for what you, what you have in that book in the fourth phase of water. But now, after the five years, it's difficult to get to continue that kind of funding. And sure. the problem is, you know, you need people in the lab to do experiments. Uh, uh, a, uh, a student, the, the cost of a, a PhD student is, is uh, uh, roughly close to $50,000 or $55,000 per year. Wow. And a postdoc, if you take care of the fringe benefits and, uh, and that, and a postdoctoral fellow, which fills many laboratories, is seventy or 75000 Most people don't understand that in order to employ somebody like that, it takes a, a good deal of money. And without those people, it's really hard to get the experiments done. And, and that, that's the reason for it. So, so we're, we're looking for, for that kind of support from people who really care about, about health and humanity and wellness. I think we have our finger on some really important, important stuff that actually has been picked up by many, many of the uh, people doing alternative medicine, uh, complementary medicine, energy medicine and such. And also a lot of spiritually oriented people uh, mm -hmm. uh, are interested in that. So, so we have following in, in those groups. I, anyway. I just. I just interviewed uh, Josh and Adam Biggleson, the sons of Dr. Harvey Biggleson, uh, just before I interviewed you now. So they'll, oh. they'll be coming on too. They, I think, you know, they're, 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 they do the, they do the same, same kind of work that Dr. Moto did, but with blood instead. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's and, great. Yeah. And there's a kind of easy, um, it's not easy water, but it's easy molecules in the blood itself that if you've got an emotional or spiritual issue or a physical issue, It'll yeah. show up in the blood, and they'll see it, and they can use oh. that as an educational diagnostic tool. Oh, how interesting! Oh, I had known that. Yeah, the blood is full of a lot of 
my friends who studies blood, um, yeah. you know, he had a video of it, and you could see, we think of the blood as pristine, and just some red blood cells, but it's sure. full of all kinds of, if you pardon the expression, crap, <laughs> junk <laughs> in the blood. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it seems to be a kind of a junk heap. <laughs> yeah. We've got to keep it thin, though, because otherwise it won't flow. Sure, and, uh, sure. One yeah. of the things that I use from a spiritual sense, Jerry, and I hope this is helpful, is to visualize a positive outcome for yourself or oneself in the future. For example, uh, you might want to visualize, and I'll visualize this for you, you're getting $5 million by the end of the year um, from some wonderful donor out there. Yeah. And you, then you, what you do, you visualize this happening, and then you bring, it, you bring that energy from the future back to your present here, and then you, then you just kind of go through the steps. That, a lot of it's attitude. Uh, that's, th I find that helps. If that helps. Yeah, thank you. Th thanks yeah. for that advice. I, I, I'll try it. And let, let's see uh, what yeah. happens. Um, sure, sure. Yeah, there, 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 I mean, there's a lot of interest in, in what's going on here. We have to connect the interest uh, with, with the people who, who have the means. And I think your suggestion of a positive attitude and thinking that it's going to happen may make a big difference. In right, that. right, absolutely, absolutely. Appreciate that. Yeah. So anyway, I'll send you an email about getting on my, my other show, too. Okay, sure. But, uh, but you're doing wonderful work, and you're doing work well, that thanks. very Thank few you. other people are doing in the world. Well, it, it, the reason... Not too many people are doing it. Is that it's not that there's any dearth of creative people. It's it's that um, the way science works is that if you don't if you don't conform to the mainstream, if if you don't stay with the limits of what kind of science allowable, mainstream, you won't get money. You won't get right. money. Like, it's disaster. You can't do what you want to do. It's the key for for doing that. And and so I think almost all scientists are smarter than I. But if they stay within the confines of the mainstream, so it's easier for them to fund it, and then they can do what they do. Right. Right. Well, it's it, no <laughs> Yeah. It's ironic, isn't it? You're doing the kind of work that needs to be done, yet the reviewers for, for your projects are generally steeped in mainstream science, and so they're not open to it. They don't understand what you're doing, and they tend to disregard it. So. Yeah, it, it's true. And, and also, you know, some of them are supported, for example, drug companies. Um, the drug companies, obviously, and the stockholders of the drug companies want to sell their drugs. Uh, a, a challenge that comes from uh, the the idea that well, maybe maybe water might be the wonder drug of of the 21st century. That feels threatening, and and it, you know it's understandable what happens when we're we're under threat. We we act in in ways that we might not be proud of. Uh -huh. um, you know, we like to keep food on our tables, and everybody has the same feeling. And so there there is that that influence and. Many of the people in medical science are actually funded by drug companies, and uh, you know they produce some some good stuff. But but um, there are some issues and problems with some of the drugs that are, are are well known. And somebody coming around and suggesting that water is actually pretty good uh, it, it, that could feel threatening. There was a there was a book on that. Uh, it was called "You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty." I don't know if you know the book. That uh, uh, huh. it was written by an Iranian guy about 30 years ago. Uh huh. Uh, he was thrown in jail after he was a supporter of the Shah of Iran. And when the Shah was deposed, he was thrown in jail uh, with the other political prisoners. So he's a doctor, and everybody came to him. You know, I got this wow. problem. I'm sick, whatever. So he said, well, you know, I don't, have, don't really have anything for you, but drink a lot of water. It produced amazing effects. And he wrote a book on that. Sold 7 million copies. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I heard the same thing happening in... Um in Nazi Germany, and in, in people in concentration camps who got sick, yeah. and they just, to get better, they drank lots of water. I haven't heard that. Uh, do you know, is there anything published or printed on that? Because I can find it. If uh, you find it, I would be yeah. seriously interested, because yeah. okay. uh, uh, that, that's a comment that comes back, and, you know, and we talk about the people, the so-called breedarians, who, uh, right. who don't eat, you know, right. how is right. this possible? And almost everybody is skeptical about it, but... You know, I've, I've interviewed some people, I've watched various documentaries, um, I've seen the evidence on this guy from India who said hey, he's gone 65 years without eating or even drinking. It's very wow. cool. That's amazing. Wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and they did studies on, on this guy. They put him in, in a room, sealed room, no food, no drink for, I think, 10 days or two weeks. Wow. They wrote a long report studying all of the physiological parameters. They, they had, there was a committee of 15 investigating, and they had everything from a cardiologist to a pulmonologist, wow. every ologist you could imagine uh, wow. studying this guy. And they concluded 
at least for 10 days or two weeks. He ate nothing and he drank nothing. And he could run upstairs after the doctor who was in charge of studying him. So I think there's something to this. And um, um, I, I forgot what the reason is I brought this up. But the point is that, you know, you get a lot of energy from easy water, uh, easy charge and, and order. And it's built from the energy of light. So just like plants, if you get light energy, light energy can keep you going. And it's the same right. with you and me. Go into a sauna, get infrared energy from the heat, you feel better. And I think the reason you feel better is that this is the kind of energy that builds your easy water right. in every organ of your body, including your brain. So right. it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Abs absolutely, Jerry, and that's why I think your, your work is so important. We've, we've got about two minutes left, and the time has gone so fast. I've had so much oh, fun yeah. talking to you, and I want to give you the rest of the time to wrap up your wonderful interview today. <laughs> okay, uh, to wrap up. Um, to wrap up. Okay. Um, I think the role of, of water in health and in wellness is widely and grossly underestimated. The book that I mentioned well, you're not sick, you're thirsty. Uh -huh. I think that epitomizes, that epitomizes the, the situation that we really need water um, right. to, for, for function. Right. And um, I brought this out in an earlier book in 2001. It was called Cells, Gels, and the Engines of Life. Uh -huh. And I brought up the idea, or the evidence, I should say, that contrary to what most biological scientists think, they think, they think that water is just the background carrier of the important molecules of life. You know, like a bathtub that in which you bathe the DNA and the proteins and such. But the evidence is otherwise. The evidence that is that water plays plays a, a compelling and central role in every major thing that cells do, from contract muscle contraction to secretion, cell division to communication. All of these water is absolutely central. And therefore, if they're absolutely if water is absolutely central, also absolutely central for health. Right the water to make things function. If they're not functioning, you're not healthy. You're pathological. Right. So you got to right. restore yourself. And there are pretty simple ways to do that that are really effective. Um, and I, in my two minutes, I, I don't have time to go into them. But one of them, of course, is, is the infrared that I was talking about, which builds, it converts ordinary water that you might drink into easy water. Beautiful. Uh, wow. another, way, another way is to, to do green juicing, you know, squeeze the water out of plants. And that's, that water is the water that's inside the cells of the plants, and it resembles the water that's inside your cells. So what you're doing is transferring the kind of water that's rich and easy water, transferring it from plants as a donor to you to make you better. And um, you know, m many people doing so-called alternative medicine, this is routine. They, wow. The patient comes, they said, drink wow. this stuff. And what I've heard is that routinely the patients come back a few months later not only are they feeling better, but, but also they've lost weight. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, so anyway, water is central to life. We're two-thirds water. Right. If, if you count by molecules, line them all up, it's actually more than 99 out of 100 of your molecules are water molecules. It's not true that they do nothing but, but, but bathe the more important molecules. They're central to everything that happens. Wow, wonderful. Absolutely right, Jerry. That's why, you're, that's why your research is so important, and that's why you should be supported. So. Well, thank you so much, Dad. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Uh, Anything I can do to help you out, Jerry, just let me know. So. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And donations are most welcome. Okay. Um, Wonderful. We really could use the money. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on my show today, Jerry, and I'll send you an email about being on the radio show next okay. week. Great. Okay. Take care. Okay, thank Jerry. Thanks so much again. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for your good work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. They think that water is just the background carrier of the important molecules of life. You know, like a bathtub that in which you bathe the DNA and the proteins and such. But the evidence is otherwise. The evidence that is that water plays plays a, 
a, a compelling and central role in every major thing that cells do, from contract muscle contraction to secretion, cell division to communication, all of these, water is absolutely central. And therefore, if, they're absolutely, if water is absolutely central, also absolutely central for health. Right. You need the water to make things function. If they're not functioning, you're not healthy. You're pathological. That's right. That's so you've got to restore yourself. And there are pretty simple ways to do that that are really effective. Um, and I, in my two minutes, I, I, I don't have time to go into them. But one of them, of course, is, is the infrared that I was talking about, which builds, it converts ordinary water that you might drink into easy water. Beautiful. Uh, wow. another, way, another way is to, to do green juicing, you know, squeeze the water out of plants. And that's, that water is the water that's inside the cells of the plants, and it resembles the water that's inside your cells. So what you're doing, transferring the kind of water that's rich and easy water, transferring it from plants as a donor to you to make you better. And um, you know, m many people doing so-called alternative medicine, this is routine. They, wow. The patient comes, they said, wow. drink this stuff. And what I've heard is that routinely the patients come back a few months later. Not only are they feeling better, but but also they've lost weight. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, so anyway, water is central to life. We're two-thirds water. Right. If, if you count by molecules, line them all up, it's actually more than 99 out of 100 of your molecules are water molecules. It's not true that they do nothing, but, but, but bathe the more important molecules. They're central to everything that happens. Wow, wonderful. Absolutely right, Jerry. That's why, you're, that's why your research is so important, and that's why you should be supported. So. Well, thank you so much, Ted. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Uh, Anything I can do to help you out, Jerry, just let me know. So. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And donations are most welcome. Okay. Um, Wonderful. We really could use the money. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on my show today, Jerry, and I'll send you an email about being on the radio show next okay. week. Great. Okay. Take care. Okay, okay, Jerry. Thanks so much again. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for your good work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. You know, one atom next to another, all organized in three dimensions, and right. and you address each one of those atoms, and the atom can be in state one or state two, zero, one, on, off, whatever you want to call it. And that that's the basis for the digital computer. But the easy water is the same. So the structure that we've deduced for this liquid crystalline water, this this structure is a regular. It's actually hexagonal, regular hexagonal array of oxygens and and hydrogens, not randomly oriented, bouncing around like a gazillion times per second, but, but you know, a crystal that's organized. And this crystal has actually been, been solidified at room temperature by some Italian group. They, they were able to, to essentially grab some of that water, dehydrate, and pull out the ordinary water, and they're left with a solid. And they gave me some. I handled it. It feels like a, a kind of thread. So what you have is a situation, an organization of oxygens and hydrogens that resemble an ordinary computer memory, except of two huge advantages. Number one, it's packed so tightly, more than those uh, silicon atoms can be, right. can be packed. Right. That's the first thing. So you have a lot of memory density, and you can pack a lot into a small package. But the second is even more interesting. So in the case of silicon, you've got uh, state one, state two. But in the case of oxygen, um, which is dominant in, in this easy water, Oxygen actually has um, five different oxidation states. The, the one that we learn about in chemistry class is minus two, like the valence of minus two. But it could be minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, and plus two. That's five. So in other words, each point in, in the EZ memory can have five different states, not two different states. So the capacity for memory storage is incredibly greater than the capacity in, in a you current current memories and I think this is for me this is really fascinating if, if we could figure out now how to access individual atoms the way it's been figured out for what uh, yeah we'd what, be there what, what what you what would be nice for you to get is a five million dollar grant to pursue this particular idea because it's worth trillions of dollars yeah it's worth 
it, it is. Uh, yeah. It, it, yeah. Um, and yeah, if 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 we if somebody wants to uh, to help, uh, that that would be great. We're we're actually looking uh, for for you know the main the main thrust of the laboratory is is not toward this technology. So it's certainly in the background, right. it's really so interesting. Right. But but the idea is for water and health. You know, everybody knows that you can't you can't live without water. Right. But the, the finding of easy water um, gives us a, a real handle on the relationship between water and health because this easy water is filling every cell. And if you're deficient, as which happens when our hair gets gray, uh, yours isn't quite gray enough, I think, to be deficient. I think you're pretty well high. India, who said hey, he's gone 65 years without eating or even drinking. It's very wow. cool. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and they did studies on, on this guy. They put him in, in a room, sealed room, no food, no drink for, wow. I think, 10 days or two weeks. Wow. They wrote a long report studying all of the physiological parameters. They, they had, they, there was a committee of 15 investigating, and they had everything from a cardiologist to a pulmonologist to wow. every ologist you could imagine uh, wow. studying this guy. And they concluded, at least for 10 days or two weeks, he ate nothing and he drank nothing, and he could run upstairs faster than the doctor who was in charge of studying him. So I think there's something to this. And um, um, I, I forgot what the reason is I brought this up. But the point is that, you know, you get a lot of energy from easy water, uh, easy water charge and, and order, and it's built from the energy of light. So just like plants, if you get light energy, light energy can keep you going. And it's the same right. with you and me. Go into a sauna, get infrared energy from the heat, you feel better, and I think the reason you feel better is that this is the kind of energy that builds your easy water right. in every organ in your body, including your brain. So right. it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, Jerry, and that's why I think your, your work is so important. We've, we've got about two minutes left, and the time has gone so fast. I've had so much uh, fun yeah. talking to you, and I want to give you the rest of the time to wrap up your wonderful interview today. <laughs> okay, uh, to wrap up. Um, to wrap up. Okay. Um, I think the role of, of water in health and in wellness is widely and grossly underestimated. The book that I mentioned, it's called You're Not Sick, You're Thirsty. Uh -huh. I think that epitomizes, that epitomizes the, the situation that we really need water um, right. to, for, for function. Right. And um, I brought this out in an earlier book in 2001. It was called Cells, Gels, and the Engines of Life. Uh -huh. And I brought up the idea or the evidence, I should say, that contrary to what most biological scientists think, they think they think that water is just the background carrier of the important molecules of life. You know, like a bathtub that in which you bathe the DNA and the proteins and such. But the evidence is otherwise. The evidence that is that water plays plays a, a compelling and central role in every major thing that cells do, from contract muscle contraction to secretion cell division to communication, all of these, water is absolutely central. And therefore, if, they're absolutely, if water is absolutely central, also absolutely central for health. Right. You need the water to make things function. If they're not functioning, you're not healthy. You're pathological. That's right. That's so you've got right. to restore yourself. And there are pretty simple ways to do that that are really effective. Um, and I, in my two minutes, I, I don't have time to go into them. But one of them, of course, is is the infrared that I was talking about. Bison, I'll visualize this for you. You're getting $5 million by the end of the year um, from some wonderful donor out there. Yeah. And, and you, then you, what you do, you visualize this happening, and then you bring, it, you bring that energy from the future back to your present here, and then you, then you just kind of go through the steps. That, a lot of it's attitude. Uh, that's, that, I find that helps. If that that's helps. Interesting. Yeah, thank you. Th thanks yeah. for that advice. I, I, I'll try it. But let's see uh, what yeah. happens. Um, sure, sure. Yeah, there, 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 I mean, there's a lot of interest in, in what's going on here. We have to connect the interest uh, with with the people who, who have the means. And I think your suggestion of a positive attitude and thinking that it's going to happen may make a big difference. Right, that. right, absolutely, absolutely. Appreciate that. Yeah. So anyway, I'll send you an email about getting on my, my other show too. Okay, sure. But uh, but you're doing wonderful work, and you're doing work well, that thanks. very thanks. few other people are doing in the world. Well, the, the, the reason. Not too many people are doing it. Is that it's not that there's any dearth of creative people. It's it's that um, the way science works is that if you don't if you don't conform to the mainstream, if if you don't stay with the limits of what kind of science allowable mainstream, you won't get money. 
get right. money. It's disaster. You can't do what you want to do. It's key for, for doing that. And, and so I think almost all scientists are smarter than that because they stay within the confines of the mainstream and so it's easier for them to be funded. And then they can do what they do. Right. Right. Well, it's it, no <laughs> yeah, it's ironic, isn't it? You're doing the kind of work that needs to be done, yet the reviewers for, for your projects are generally steeped in mainstream science, and so they're not open to it. They don't understand what you're doing, and they tend to disregard it. So Yeah, it, it's true. And, and also, you know, some of them are supported, for example, drug companies. Um, the drug companies, obviously, and the stockholders of the drug companies want to sell their drugs. Uh, a, a challenge that comes from uh, the the idea that you well know, maybe maybe water might be the wonder drug of of the 21st century that feels threatening and and it, you know it's understandable what happens when we're we're under threat we we act in in ways that we might not be proud of uh -huh. um, you know we like to keep food on our tables and everybody has the same feeling and so there there is that that influence and many of the people in medical science are actually funded by drug companies. And I, you know, they produce some some good stuff, but but um, there are some issues and problems with some of the drugs that are, are are well known. And somebody coming around and suggesting that water is actually pretty good uh, it, it, that could feel threatening. There was a there was a book on that. Uh, it was called "You're Not Sick and Thirsty." I don't know if you know the book, Dad. Uh, uh, huh. It was written by an Iranian guy about 30 years ago. Uh huh. Uh, he was thrown in jail after he was a supporter of the Shah of Iran. And when the Shah was deposed, he was thrown in jail uh, with the other story. But in, in fact, it's the kind of water that fills your body, Ted, and my body too, and the body of, of, of uh, viewers. It's the kind of water that we have inside of our body. You know, we, we, we all think, we all know that we've got two-thirds water, approximately, um, 60, 70 percent water. Right. Um, and, but, but, and we assume that it's the same kind of water that's the water in a glass. But in fact, it's not. It's this fourth phase, and this this fourth phase, this fourth phase is like a liquid crystal. Um, it's water where the molecules, instead of bouncing around many many times per per second, a gazillion times per second, and sitting uh, the molecules sitting randomly with respect to one another, this is order. It's like a crystal. Uh, the molecules are actually in line, just just um, like uh, any other crystal that you 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 could imagine, and. Uh, this idea is not new. Uh, the idea has been around for uh, much more than a, than a half century. In fact, there's a guy, um, his name is Gilbert Ling, and Gilbert is now 98 years old and still kicking. And Gilbert has written seven books, uh, all dealing with the, the um, subject of ordered or structured water. Um, and and uh, his books have made an impression on a few people, and uh, I'm one of those few. Is mostly it's been rejected by scientists as preposterous, um, because everyone knows that there's no such thing as ordered water. But in fact, there's a huge amount of evidence for it. So, you, you may know Ted. I I organize each year the annual conference on the physics, chemistry, and biology of water, and. Is really it used to be in Vermont, but now it's in in Sofia, Bulgaria, and at that meeting, the idea of ordered water, everybody knows about it. It's sort of common knowledge. It's not it's not anything that's new or exotic. We just want to find out the properties of it. So I can tell you much more. I'm not sure what what's of interest, but it's really critical, of course, to know what's inside your body. And this kind of water is inside your body. Well, I know you've written about easy water in your book. Right. And you've written beyond this solid liquid vapor, which is in all the texts. Everybody growing up, or going to college or high schools, whatever, we all intuitively think, okay, there's, there's, there's frozen water, ice, there's liquid water, and then there's kind of a gaseous kind of a cloud form of water. But yep. beyond that, there's another form of water, and you've written about it. What, what is that form, Jerry? Well, we call it easy water because, it be, it, it, because of, uh, of the way we, we discovered it. We, we put... We, we had a, some water with particles in the water, little particles we used, microspheres. And then we took a gel, just like a piece of jello, a little piece, and we put it in the water. And we looked in the microscope to see what happened. And what happened is that right next to, right next to that gel, all the microspheres got pushed out. So it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that, you know, if you're putting light on and this zone expands, this liquid crystal then easy water expands, then, you know, maybe 
photons, maybe light, provides the energy necessary wow. for growth. Wow. So, so we did experiments and we found exactly that was the case. But the kind of light is, is not, not visible light that, that, that we're so familiar with. Invisible light works, but what works 100 times better is infrared light. Now, I don't know, Ted, if, you, if, if, if you're aware too much about infrared, most people don't, don't really know about infrared light, where it comes from, whatever. So, you know, you, you kind of, if you have a toaster at home, turn on the toaster and you look inside the slots, you can see glowing coils and you say, uh, oh yeah, that's hot. And it looks like it's generating infrared light. Uh -huh. a lot sure. of people know that. And it is. But actually, the infrared light is coming from everywhere. And, Interesting. And, yeah, and you can, you can, um, you can check this. You just get an infrared camera. So it's like, like an ordinary camera, uh, except that your camera responds to visible light. And if it's dark in the room, you, know, you get no image. This camera responds to infrared light. So it's great for night vision. You know? So if you, if you turn out all the lights uh, and you can't see anything with your, your eyes and turn on this camera, you get a beautiful image of everything that's around you because everything is generating infrared light. And that's the basis for the night vision. You can't see with your eye, but the infrared detector can pick up this light. So it's all around us. You can't right. get rid of it. It's actually, it comes free. It's free energy. Wow. Imagine, free energy. You don't have to pay a nickel for it. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very nice. And, and because it's there all the time, it means that the easy water is there all the time. But you add a little more to it, you get more easy water. Wow. Uh, you see, yeah. That's, and, that's amazing. Well, it is amazing. It's really to think about it that, that nature is giving you something free. It's, I, yeah, please, go ahead. I have a couple of messages to give you, and I think this might be useful for your research at some point in the future. Yeah. Um, first off, um, uh, Mattia, there's a fellow I interviewed last year named Matthias Di Stefano. He's an Argentinian young man. He's about 29 years old. And he has vivid life recollections of what life was like in Atlantis. He's been on my show before. Yeah. And one of the things he said was that they used water, like easy water, yeah. to, in organic computers as memory devices, which is far more efficient than microchips, far more efficient. <laughs> and, and I said, well, he said, that's the reason why you don't find any written records of the Atlantean civilization, because they had it on these, in, in, these process, in these organic computers, which had water as a memory. And he said that, that memory, those, those volumes, that information is actually in, this, in the ocean of the Atlantic Ocean now. But it's like scattered about, and you have to have a special way to get to it. Mm. Um, so I wanted to share that with you. States. So the capacity for memory storage is incredibly greater than the capacity in, in you, current, current you, memories. And you, I think this is, for me, this is really fascinating. If, if we could figure out now how to access individual atoms the way it's been figured out for, what, uh, yeah, we'd what, be there. What, what, you, what would be nice for you to get is a $5 million grant to pursue this particular idea, because it's worth trillions of dollars. Yeah, it's worth, it, it is. Uh, yeah. It, 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 yeah. Um, and yeah, if, 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 we, if somebody wants to, uh, to help, uh, that, that would be great. We're, we're actually looking uh, for, for, you know, the main, the main thrust of the laboratory is, is not toward this technology, so it's certainly in the background. Right. It's really so interesting. Right. But, but the idea is for water and health. You know, everybody knows you can't, you can't live without water. Right. But the, the finding of easy water um, gives us a, a real handle on the relationship between water and health because this easy water is filling every cell. And if you're deficient, as, which happens when our hair gets gray, uh, yours isn't quite gray enough, I think, to be deficient. I think you're pretty well hydrated. But in, in my case, I think I need to drink a lot of water to keep yeah. <laughs> keep. Right. I do too. So this water, the water that we drink forms yeah. easy water, yeah. and this yeah. easy water is critical for every function of your cell. The, the water is integrated into the function. If you don't have enough of it, yeah. you're not functioning well. See, uh, I, please, go ahead. I have to tell you, I've got an idea for you. Tomorrow I'll be playing on my show an interview I had with Master Lin in China. Ah. And, and he talked about an organic computer as well. Oh, oh, okay. And the other message I wanted to give you was, is, I don't know a thing about chemistry, but what I was given on, from the other side was H2O3. That's different from H2O2, H2O. Is that there's yeah. added oxygen molecules, and those added molecules can serve as a memory, some sort of memory function. Does that make sense? I don't know what yeah, I'm talking I, about. Yeah, I think you, you might. I might not be referring to H3O2. Um, so this, this is, 
this is the, 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 the easy water, and, and it, it does have extra oxygen compared to H2O. Right. Um, see, if you have to take H2O, multiply by 2, you get uh -huh. H4O2. Um, this is H3O2, so right. it, it has fewer hydrogens than you expect, which is the same as saying there are more oxygens than, than you expect. And yeah, I'd say oxygens, I think, that are responsible because of their versatility and their capacity to... To, um, to, to exhibit uh, all of these different states. So maybe, maybe Master Lin has figured out how to, how to access it. Um, I, I'm not sure, but certainly, you know, there's a lot of evidence that electromagnetic waves can, can do that because there are many experiments now that, that show that if you take water, particularly easy water, right. and you, you expose it to electromagnetic waves, it changes the water. The structure changes in different ways, and this is really fascinating.